So now we're going to be talking about colligative properties, and specifically colligative properties of solutions. All right? um, so what colligative properties are, are properties that are independent of type. So it didn't matter if you have NaCl, KCl, if you have the same concentration of them, they're going to affect these certain properties in the same amount. All right? So it's specific only to the amount or the concentration of these um, particles or of these uh, for these properties. All right? um, and the three that we're going to be looking at is vapor pressure, boiling point and freezing point and we'll see um, this is one thing that we should just memorize right now um, it's vapor pressure depression right? um, boiling point elevation and freezing point depression right? so that will come in handy later so the first thing we're going to be talking about is vapor pressure depression right? so vapor pressure depression um, so first off, let's define what vapor pressure is. Uh, vapor pressure is the pressure that a gas exerts um, on a liquid. So for example, um, we know that a liquid, when it turns into gas, it doesn't do, do it all at once, right? So eventually we have these little gas particles that um, release from the liquid, um, and this is when we're starting to get to the boiling point. Um, and these vapor vapor molecules will exert some type of pressure on the top of the surface of the liquid and that's what we define as vapor pressure. But if we add in certain solute molecules, so if we add in different molecules like for example we mentioned NaCl or KCl, um, if we add those in it's going to de decrease the vapor pressure. Okay? And how much is it going to decrease the pre vapor pressure by? Okay? Um, so what this is saying is Delta P, the change in vapor pressure, um, and P naught is the initial pressure, the initial vapor pressure, um, and this XS is the mole fraction of the solute, okay? Mole fraction. And mole fraction was defined as moles of that solute that we added over total number of moles, okay? Um, so yeah, pretty simple. We just need to memorize that equation, and it's always vapor pressure depression due to that negative sign, okay? So now on to the boiling point elevation. So before we actually talk about um, the equation, we need to define what boiling point is. And I guess a lot of us know this just by, you know, when we see water boil when we're cooking, uh, we understand that as boiling point. But what exactly does that mean? And this is a very important property. So boiling point is when the vapor pressure equals our surrounding pressure. And generally we have our surrounding pressure as one ATM, but in a, a chemistry setting, we can always change this uh, surrounding pressure to be anything. If we increase that, uh, it would be, so for example, if we made this 2 atm, then the vapor pressure uh, would have to increase as well, which means the boiling point would also have to be a lot higher. And so that's how cooking uh, different types of pressure cookers work. Uh, we're changing this, um, we're changing this uh, surrounding pressure so that we can change the boiling point. Because remember, no liquid can go past the temperature of the boiling point. So now on to the actual equation of boiling point elevation. Um, it's going to be delta T equals KIM. And this is a pretty easy one to remember, just KIM. It's pretty simple, and we'll see that freezing point depression is the same equation, but uh, opposite. Um, so delta T is obviously the change in temperature, so the change in boiling point that it's going to be. Um, and we know that there's no negative sign, so that it's going to be an elevation, so it's always going to be an increase. Um, so similarly, if we add these solute molecules, um, the, vapor, the boiling point is going to increase. Okay? Um, so that's what it is. It's always when we add in these solute molecules, okay? And that's where this M comes in. This is molality. And so this would be um, the moles of a solute over kilograms of a solvent, okay? This I is the Van Hoff factor. And remember, for example, um, NaCl, uh, the Van Hoff factor equals 2. Um, it's the amount that the certain solute will dissolve in water. Um, and this is a constant. Okay? Um, so pretty much your delta T is KIM. Uh, you just multiply those across and it will be the change in boiling point. And it will always be an increase. Finally, we're going to be talking about the freezing point depression. Um, and so freezing point is obviously the, the temperature it takes to, to actually freeze the molecules, to freeze um, a liquid um, into a solid state. Right. So the equation again is that Kim, but now it's a negative sign and it's the same, um, it'll be a decrease in the freezing point.
So a practical application of this is if you any of you guys live, um, you know, where snow is around, and they always throw salt on the on the ground on the freeways, right? If you add this salt, um, that will uh, be a have a certain molality, certain concentration. Okay, let's just say that it has whatever any number, right? And this Van Hal factor is going to be two, right? Because NaCl is going to be two, constant whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. That means delta T is going to be negative. Well, it's going to be negative one k, um, but it'll just be a decrease. That's all that's important. Um, the freezing point will decrease. Okay, so what does that mean? That means um, all of your solid ice or your solid snow uh, will now turn into liquid. So your solid will now turn into liquid because the temperature is constant. So if we're still at um, zero degrees Celsius um, as our temperature, uh, and that's what uh, water freezes at, but now we just change the freezing point down to negative 10 degrees Celsius because of this freezing point depression. Uh, but the surrounding temperature is zero degrees Celsius, this will be in a, a liquid phase. And so that's why we see a solid will be changed into a liquid, and that's what this point of this freezing point depression is. Changing something um, from a normal solid state now into a liquid. And so for the MCAT's purpose, what exactly do we need to know for these three? Um, all we need to know is just the equations. Just memorize the equations, know how to apply them, don't worry about anything else. Okay? Um, everything else will be given on the actual test. You don't need to know any further than that. Just those three equations and you're good.